Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah's Cross Dressing Stories. Today I'm going to share with you My Drunk Dad Caught Me, Part 1. If you're new to the channel then please subscribe now for more captivating stories and please support me on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Sarah101 Standing there in those clothes while my father muttered under his breath wasn't the scariest thing about being there. It was the fact that he was drunk while my mother was lying on the floor out cold from her daily dose of bourbon. My father took two steps towards me, his hand raised in a fist, and I knew he was going to hit me again, but I had had enough. He moved to strike, and just as his arm began to swing at me, I moved, landing a punch right on his temple which sent him to the floor like a wet sack of flour, leaving me panting in joy, fear, and disgust. Stepping over him, I went to my room, gathered up my clothes, makeup, and jewelry, slipped on a pair of jeans, touched up my lipstick, then left them there, both on the floor, out cold. I had only one place to go, and as I trudged through the wintry snow, I gathered my courage, ready to not only tell the one person that I thought I could trust, but show him the reason why I left. My parents, in and out of jail on a variety of charges, usually drunkenness, left me no choice, but at age 15 I should not have to be the one running the house. I was tired of being hungry most of the time, having my scant wages taken to buy booze, then enduring the constant tirades and beatings I was getting. Dressing as a girl was dangerous in my house, yet I could not deny how I felt and continued to get all dressed up going out as a girl rather than stay and watch my parents as they drank themselves into a stupor every night. My coat hid my small but nicely rounded breasts, but could not hide my bottom and with the padding I was using, I looked like a girl from behind, especially since my hair went down to the middle of my back. The wind picked up and the snow grew more intense as I plodded to the station. The inner warmth of the building was a welcome respite, and using my last few dollars, I bought a ticket to my Uncle Bill's. My perfume smelled good against the foul odor of the train, and as I sat there in my seat, I was wary as I watched the other passengers, since it was well known that young girls were attacked on a regular basis. The ride took almost three hours and was without incident, which made me only a little less concerned. When the train stopped, I stepped out on the boardwalk of the small station and right into the brunt of the storm. Bundling up tight, I plodded across the platform, then down to the street. With no more money I would have to walk to his house, but rather than worry about it, I began my trek through the snow. It was like being on an alien planet. The snow obscured everything while piling up on the sidewalks, making it harder and harder to get through it, but just when I thought I could go no further, a car pulled up beside me. I looked and saw a police car. I first thought that my parents had managed to figure out where I went, but that was ridiculous. They didn't care where I went. The policeman waved me inside the warm car, asking where I was going. I told him, and without a word he started towards my destination. The town, a small hamlet near the coast, was made up of mostly suburbanites that worked in a larger city not far away, and my Uncle Bill was no exception. I call him Uncle Bill, but he's not really related at all. He was a close friend of my grandfather's before he died, and all I ever called him was Uncle Bill. His wife, now retired from the FBI, worked as an executive secretary for 20-plus years. Not having called them, I had no idea if they were even home, but it was the only place I had left to go. I could only hope they were home. The policeman concentrated on his driving, leaving me to savor the warmth in the car and not have to answer many questions. Finally he stopped in front of a house, a low ranch-style home, all brick with a winding sidewalk. Thanking the officer, I made my way through the snow. The doorbell rang, and as I waited, I wondered yet again if I were doing the right thing. Then the door opened. Yes. 
Kathy asked me, concerned in her eyes. Aunt Kathy? It's me. Tom. Thomas? From the city? Well, come in, you poor dear. Uncle Bill walked into the hallway, a question in his eyes until he finally recognized me. Thomas. He said in a booming voice, Nice to see you, boy. Get those boots off and come sit in here. We sat at the kitchen table sipping freshly brewed coffee and munching on some homemade cookies. I had decided not to hide what was going on, regardless of how much it hurt me, or them, so. I, I left home today. I. Your father smacking you around again? Bill always did go for the throat. Yeah, I said, he was drunk again, and well, he saw how I was dressed, and went. Just how were you dressed, dear? Kathy, in her soft voice, pointed those deep brown eyes right at me, and smiled. I was, I mean that I... It's okay, dear, you can tell us. Bless her, she always sounded calm. I was, dressed as a girl. Silence reigned as they digested what I had told them, then. Care to tell us, Bill asked me, why you were dressed as a girl, Thomas? I didn't have a choice, I said, I had to do it. Someone forced you to dress up as a girl? Um, no, sir. Then why were you? I think Kathy said that what Thomas is trying to tell us is that he wants to be a girl, and whatever is driving him forced him to dress that way, which led to this visit. Turning to me and taking my hand in hers, I'm right, aren't I, Thomas? You didn't have a choice, because you couldn't be anything but a girl. Nodding my head yes, I started to cry. Between my parents and my admission, I was drained, tired, broke, and hungry. As I sat there sobbing, Kathy took me by the hand to a spare room, told me to shower, and change clothes while she made something to eat. Pretty! Kathy added as she put the plates on the table. You won't laugh? They shook their heads, no. Elizabeth Michelle I said softly while looking over the rim of my coffee cup. That's nice, now eat your dinner Kathy said as she sat next to me, and I have to admit that I cleaned that plate, twice. It was the first real food other than a burger that I had eaten in two days. Later, as I helped do the dishes. You can't go home now, Elizabeth, you know that, don't you? Yes, ma'am. Dad, if he didn't die, would beat me to a pulp the minute he got sober. So, you'll stay here with us for a while. I can use the company, and you need someone to talk to. Bill will be all right, he's just not used to having anyone here but the two of us. What about? I motioned at my clothes. Oh, that. Right now you need to feel safe and clean. We'll worry about the rest after we talk some more, girl to girl, okay? I hugged her, making her dress wet with water from my hands. But we both laughed, and later that night I slipped into bed, ready to hopefully begin my life all over again. Kathy was gone in the morning when I got up, but Bill sat at the table, smiling as he saw me walk into the room. I had some coffee, read part of his paper, then he said he had to leave. He was gone about twenty minutes when Kathy returned with some bags in her hands. That snow is a bitch, Elizabeth, but the roads are clear enough. I went out and picked up a few things. Maybe after we clean up, we can see how they fit? Looking in the bags, I saw that Kathy had bought panties, a bra, some pantyhose, a long skirt, a nice blouse and a sweater, plus a pair of shoes. She and I took the things to my room, where I eagerly wanted to try them on. 
As I began to undress I saw that Kathy had not left the room, so I turned away from her, to hide myself, then as I put the clothes on I was surprised to see that everything fit. Kathy took me to her room, sat me in her vanity, and while she brushed out my hair we talked about why I wanted to be a girl, I didn't know, I just do. I said. How often did my dad beat me? She wanted to know, often I told her, then she wanted to know about my mother. Wasted was the only word that came to mind. My mother was down to 85 pounds at best, her once lustrous hair now gray and dirty, her once bright eyes dead and pale from so many years of abusing booze. I was unable to cry for her though, I was long past that. Only anger remained. Kathy listened to my story without making any judgments, letting me try to explain how and why I felt like I did, about the terror I always felt around my parents, the dread that always enveloped me every time I had to become a boy, even for a single day, and my longing to be a woman like her, strong and efficient, loving and warm, even to a virtual stranger like me. She made me feel like a person again, a girl person, all without the slightest hint that I was wrong, strange, or even crazy. I began to feel like I wanted to call her mother, yet I didn't, afraid that might upset the delicate balance of trust she and I had established. I couldn't help but notice, Kathy said calmly as she took my hand, that you have some development that is unusual for a boy. Just how big are you, dear? She had seen me. Slumping in the chair, I looked at her quick smile and gentle eyes, then, B. Well, I'm almost a B cup. That's why I always wear baggy clothes, so Dad won't see. Tell me about it, dear. We can't help you if we don't know what's going on, can we? Once it was out, I had nothing to lose, so I told her how I had always felt like a girl and sometimes had the chance to dress as a girl before Mom and Dad started on the booze anyway and how Mom's doctor gave her some pills to help her condition. But the pills would also make boys grow up like girls, so after she quit taking them because they made her sick when she drank, I kept refilling the prescription and taking them myself. How long have you been taking them? Kathy asked me. A little over a year, I guess. It was just after I turned 14. Well, that explains the smooth skin, wider hips, and your breasts. Tell me, how did you plan on hiding these changes for three more years? I mean, you'll certainly mature a bit more, and that will mean that everything will get bigger. I know, I said sadly, that's one of the reasons I left. Since. Kathy asked, we are just girls here, will you let me see the changes? All of them? Nodding my agreement, we went to my room where I undressed down to my panties and let Kathy look at me. Clicking her tongue now and then made me worried, then she told me to get dressed, asking me about school, if I was going, and how I like it. Since, I told her, we were on our winter break, I did not have to be back for three weeks, and with Christmas just around the corner, I left. I told her I liked math, English, and history, but I never got good grades simply because of what it was like at home. That's all for now. See you in the next video. Please share your valuable opinion and please support me on Patreon to get the early access. Link in the first comment.